Hello! Hello everybody. Welcome to Once Upon a Die. Um, I hope that this finds everybody well and keeping in good health. And this is a little bit of an impromptu session. Normally I like to give a little more notice that I'm going to be streaming, but uh, unfortunately just because of the way that my plans have gone for tomorrow, which is when I was going to be streaming. I'm not going to be streaming then. I won't be available, so I figured I'd do it tonight instead. Make sure I don't miss out on another session, because I've been a little sparse recently. Um, good evening, Jen. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming along to join our intrepid adventurers uh, tonight. So, tonight we are going to be playing through, as you can see uh, in the center of your screen right now, Deep Space, where I can't do this properly because I don't know where my hands are going. There we go! Deep Space D6. No, that's really not right. There we go. <laughs> it's hard to guide your hands when the camera is above you. Um, Deep Space D6 is a solitaire only, uh, you can see from the uh, subtitle of the game, it's a crew assignment game, uh, which is another way of saying worker placement, but I like that they've themed it to what the game is about. This is a crew assignment game. Uh, and it is all about surviving uh, a trap. You have led your crew, uh, the crew of the UES Crypsis, um, into a trap, uh, which is obviously not ideal. Um, and Mr. Jeremy, hello, nice to see you along as well. Um, thank you for coming to join. Um, so yes, you have led your people into a trap, and you have to survive until the rescue fleet can get there. Uh, this is no easy task, I will state that. Um, I've played this game a few times, I have won it, I have lost it. Uh, it is a real challenge, uh, but it is a lot of fun and I hope that you guys will enjoy this. Uh, for anybody who is watching who has played the game FTL Faster Than Light um, on PC or Mac or uh, mobile devices. This is kind of what I see as being currently uh, very close to being the board game iteration of FTL. Um, in FTL, you know, you're the lone spaceship with, uh, with information on it trying to get back to your fleet and you're having to charge through masses of occupied, enemy occupied space to do that. Um, this kind of has a feel of that except you're stuck in place and all the bad guys are coming to you. Um, but they do not behave by uh, and I really hope I'm quoting this right. They do not behave by Bruce Lee rules. Uh, one of the big uh, things that Bruce Lee always said about... Um, I'm pretty sure it's Bruce Lee. Uh, I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong on that. But he said about fighting in uh, films, the reason that the enemy always attacks one by one in a film, especially in a big complicated martial arts fight, is that the, uh, the mind, you know, when you're watching a film, you can't deal with too much stuff going on all at once. Uh, so if the enemy attacks one by one, then your mind can keep up with what's happening. These guys don't do that. They come at you one by one, but they can really pile up. Uh, and you're in trouble if they really get a foothold going. So, let's have a look at this game. I'm going to get rid of that box cover. Um, this is a super, super cute bit game in terms of its presentation. This is the box, uh, which if I hold it up next to my head, it's a small box. Quite a small box, but it's really, really nicely presented. Uh, obviously designed to look like the old Choose Your Own Adventure books, which I particularly appreciate. Um, designed by Tony Go, as you can see here. Uh, and it's most of what comes in the box we're going to play with right now. Uh, the, one, the three things we're not going to play with are the three other ships. Uh, this ship here, the Athena Mark II, is the ship that I'm going to be fighting with today. But there is also the Halcyon, uh, which is kind of the... Uh, I don't know if it's exactly the beginner ship. I, these, these two are both implied to be uh, around similar levels of difficulty. I think this might be a fraction easier just because of one of the things that it does. Uh, there's the AG-8, uh, which is a slightly trickier ship to work with. And as you can see, it has sort of extra bits and pieces about it because it can have drones that go out and fight. And we have the Monono... I can never say this right. Mononoaware. Uh, which is an experimental alien ship. Think about it's the it's the ship that uh, Jeff Goldblum and Will Smith steal on Independence Day. They don't really know what they're doing, but they're going to have a crack at it. Um, I am not playing with those. I figured I'd go with the Athena. I've actually exclusively played with the Halcyon up to this point, so this is going to be an interesting experiment for me. The big things that change is what um, what the, the the crew members can do, uh, and that will make sense in just a moment. So. Uh, 
what we're going to be doing is trying to get through this deck of cards. This is the threat deck. When that is depleted, there's two ways of winning this game. You can play it that when this is depleted and you've beaten all the external threats, then you've won. Um, but there is also the Ouroboros, which is a six-card boss that comes out. And there's two ways of having him come out. You can either shuffle him into the threat deck, and when the sixth card comes out, you deploy a Roboros and he comes to fight you. Or you can do what I'm going to do today because I want you to see the whole game through, which is once the threat deck has been depleted, a Roboros shows up. So he's more of a final boss rather than a, th a super threat that can turn up at any point. Um, but yes, we're, we're going to try and get through this threat deck. The way they were going to be doing that, anybody familiar with worker placement games will have a rough idea. If you haven't seen a worker placement game before, it's very simple. It means you have workers, which in this case are dice. Uh, of course, I pick up the one that isn't, but we'll come back to that. And you place them out onto the board, and they get to do a thing. In this game, uh, this isn't always the case. In this game, all workers are not created equal. Uh, what you roll on the die determines what that worker is able to do. So for here, for example, uh, I have chosen the engineer, um, who is good at repairing the hull. Uh, which is a standard thing that can happen on all ships. Uh, but in the case of the Athena, he can also perform a scan. We'll come back to that. Um, the commander can go and... Excuse me. The commander always has a special action, which in this case is copying a different die, and so on and so on and so on. We'll come back to that in a bit. Um, but what we're going to do, first thing we do is we roll all of our immediately available dice, which in theory is six. These six dice here. May not be six. Some of the true might... Uh, Try again. Some of the crew might get hung up doing other activities. Uh, they might be um, uh, damaged or, uh, well, I guess injured or stuck doing something else. Um, oh, I just missed that. Sorry, Jeremy says immediately I got Independence Day vibes from that ship. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I mean, I, I guess to a certain degree, uh, it's the standard flying saucer shape. Um, I would also call up some of the XCOM ships as being, a, a, you know, the early scout ships in XCOM as being good examples. But yes, I get a lot of Independence Day from that. Um, especially when they say it's experimental. Anyway, um, yes, so we're going to roll up our dice. Uh, the second thing that we do is this is the bad result on the die. Uh, this is a threat result that indicates that there is a threat approaching. Uh, all of those that you roll, this isn't a, a Yahtzee-style game. You don't keep re-rolling your dice. As soon as you roll any of these, they go straight up into these three spots up here. Um, there are, I believe, the Halcyon also has three. Uh, but the AG-8 and the Mononoa Wear actually only have two. Um, as soon as you have filled up all of those slots, an additional threat comes and says hello. So basically, something extra has come down and is going to cause you trouble. Uh, that's bad, needless to say. So these are the these are the dice you don't want to be rolling. Um, but they go there immediately. Uh, if this is then full, that's when you draw the threat. Right at the beginning of the turn, threat comes out, which does have one saving grace. You then assign your crew to all of their um, stations to do what you want them to do. Uh, that can include damaging threats, that can include healing people who are sick, fixing your hull, recharging your shields. I'll go through all of these in just a second. But that means you can damage all threats that are currently present, including the threat that just showed up because this filled up. So the one benefit to the extra threat is you get to fight it before it gets to fight you, which is always nice. We then draw a new threat card, and you then roll the threat die, which is a bog standard D6. Now the reason you do that is threats look something like this. This is a nasty one, this is the flagship. This has four health. That's the, the triangle in the top left hand corner says it has four health, which means when it comes out, I will put it here, and if I do two damage to it, I'll move it down to here, and if I do two more damage to it, it goes away. That's how this little tracker works. It's very smart. I'm going to move that over here in the hopes that I might lose a little of the glare that I'm getting there. My uh, bet noir is back. That's better, actually, because I think the glare is in between two and three. So let's do that. Um, but yes, that's what the four means on this. Um, if this ship activates, it will remove three hull from mine. That's the effect at the bottom, minus three hull. It activates if, when I roll the threat die, I roll a four, five, or six. All right, so if I roll this... Uh, I just rolled a six, I lose three hull, because this guy is present. But, if I had this guy here as well, the Corsair, that is also, well he wouldn't be there, he'd be here. Um, that is also affected on a six, and both of them would go off, so I would lose two hull and three hull for a total of five. So the threat die is bad because these things are cumulative. Um, 
I'm sorry, there is going to be a little glare. As usual, I will do my best to uh, to work around that. Is there somewhere I can put these? Oh, actually, that's better. So if this is as low as I can get it, but still on the... That's mostly visible and only gets better from there. Okay, so the board's going to be down here, so I'll put the threat deck up top. Um, yes, uh, you obviously want to destroy these things quickly, uh, because if the threat die shows a, a threat that's on multiple cards, they will all go off, and that's not good. So that's the, what the threat cards do. Um, then you will get all of your crew back and you start another turn. So you are guaranteed to get one threat every turn, possibly two if you're unlucky with the, uh, the threat dice. Um, so that's what that does. What can we do to solve all of this problem? Well, a few things. Firstly, our uh, scales here on the left are hull and shields. Shields are green, hull is grey. Uh, all damage goes onto these. The shields get damaged first. So if I took five damage right now, my shields would go down to one. If I took five damage right now, I would lose one shield and then four hull. That's how that works. If my hull reaches zero, I lose the game because we just blew up. That is obviously not good. At the top, we've already talked about this. We have the, uh, um, uh, the, the threat incoming threat track. Uh, here on the left-hand side, we have the infirmary. This is where people go when they are injured, uh, which may happen quite a bit. Um, I have... There are two sides to the infirmary. There is this side, which literally just has infirmary and returned. Returned means you've put dice there that you're going to get back at the end of the turn. That's just a storage area, so you don't play them by accident. The infirmary is where they go when they're injured and you have to actively get them back. On this side, there's a bonus thing that you can send a unit to the infirmary to pick, so a die, basically. You can send one die to the infirmary and lock it in order to be able to flip any other die that you still have available to a different face. Um, I like that. Uh, I think that is a great benefit to this game because it lets you kind of mess around a little bit. I don't always play with it, but because I'm playing with the Athena for the very first time, I am going to play with it. Billy, hello. Uh, you say Ouroboros. Yes, Ouroboros. Um, I'm going to come on to him in just a second. Uh, I am playing the end of the deck version of, uh, or deployment method for that. But I'll come on to him in a second. The different things, uh, we've already talked about this track on the uh, right hand side here. Uh, we'll come back to the, so you'll see that work once we start playing. But basically if a ship with four health comes out, it goes here and it goes down by one for every damage you do to it. And once it has zero damage left, you discard it and it's out of the game. Um, and then we have the different areas of our crew. And this is the bit that is the most FTL-like for those of you who've played FTL, because each room here does a different thing and you have to put crew in it in order to do that thing. So, top left-hand corner here, we have launch rockets. Uh, you need a tactical officer, uh, which is this little arrow symbol. Uh, if you put a tactical officer in there, they will launch rockets. They do two damage. Uh, one of the things that I think probably makes the Halcyon a slightly easier ship is, one, they have lasers, and you can power the lasers up by throwing more tactical officers in there. But two, you can split the damage. So if I do five damage with my lasers, I can split that between different ships, uh, different threats. As the Athena, I cannot because you can't split a rocket down the middle and throw it at two different ships. They, it just goes one place, bang, does the damage. But I can stack tactical officers in there to launch more than one rocket. The quantum cannon is an interesting one. I need a tactical officer and a science officer to do that, and I take a threat and shuffle it back into the deck. Um, so basically, I'm not winning further by activating that, but I'm taking something that's potentially really bad, or if I've got a nasty combo out, uh, like the, the, the Corsair and the flagship, so I'm taking tons of damage from the same die rolls on the threat die, I can just beam one of them back if I know I'm not going to be able to destroy it quick enough. The commander can go in here and copy another crew die. Basically what that means is any die I just rolled this round, I can then ape and do the same thing with it. So if I want an extra tactical officer and I only have one, I can roll, uh, I can place a commander in here and make a duplicate of the tactical officer. Um, the science officer can go in here and recharge the shields. Now the nice thing about the shields is whoop, they go straight back up to the top every time you recharge them. So they're a really, really critical barrier to the damage that's going to be coming in your way. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Uh, I can send my engineer in to repair the hull. Now the reason I say the shields are better is you can only repair the hull two steps at a time. So if I've taken three damage and I go in here, I'm only going up by two and I still haven't got back to the top. So it is a bigger investment to repair your hull, which makes a huge amount of sense when you think about it. If you're just repairing a shield generator on the inside of your ship, that's great. But if you've got gaping holes in the side, you're going to have a problem. Um, so you can repair the hull by two, or you can perform a scan. Now what a scan means, this is Athena-specific, Athena you get to draw the top two cards of this deck, have a look at them to see what they are, and put them back in the same order. So I don't get to change what's coming, but I get to have a heads up as to what's coming, which could be quite nice, and we'll see. I've never used that before, so we'll see how it goes. Lastly, the medical officer can go in here, and that will allow you to return all units from the infirmary. So if these two guys are here in the infirmary, then I can move them up to the return section, and at the end of the round I will take them back. If they are still here at the end of the round, I won't get them back to roll next round, so I have to leave them there. Alternatively, if I put my medical officer in there, I can take all the dice that I have left available and re-roll them. And that's the other ability that they have. That's it! That is 99% of the game, with two exceptions. There are six cards that say, don't panic. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, anybody? If you draw a Don't Panic card, nothing happens. It's great. That threat is a nothing. It's it's a, a blip uh, in your scanners. You thought something was coming, but fortunately it didn't, or they went somewhere else, whatever it happens to be. Um, that is a nice card. It is, uh, it is a rest card, and it means you don't have to worry about what's going on, which is always good. The second cards I've already talked about uh, briefly are Ouroboros. Ouroboros is a six-part boss. You have to defeat the core of Ouroboros uh, in order to be able to beat it. But that's real hard, because you have to get to the core first. Uh, you have to do successfully do damage to it, while a metric ton of firepower is coming your way. Note, it, note that Ouroboros comes out en masse, so all six parts will appear simultaneously. And you have seven hull damage coming your way, including three that ignores your shields completely. You roll the threat die twice. Um, there's a barrier here that protects Ouroboros. You have to blow this up to get to the core. But if it's destroyed and you... Uh, if you roll a five uh, and it's been destroyed, it comes back. And you have the core, which, every time it activates, just sends a unit to the infirmary. Um, which is great, because it's thinning out your dice, which is the very last thing that you need. So Ouroboros is a nasty, nasty, nasty thing to fight. I'm going to come clean and say I have never beaten Ouroboros, which is one of the reasons I wanted to put it at the very end of the game, rather than doing the potential pop-up in the middle of the game thing, because if I unfortunately shuffled all of this to the top of the deck uh, and had to play it out early, I'm done. So, we'll have a go. So I'm not going to shuffle these in, I'm just going to set them to the side up here, and they will come into play when this deck is empty. The one thing I'm going to do is set the difficulty. You play with all six of these for easy, you play with one of them for hard, or you play with three of them for medium. And that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to set medium difficulty, and I'm going to just put these guys in and shuffle up this deck. Um, and then we're going to have a go, and we're going to try and survive until the rescue fleet arrives. Um, quite the challenge. Uh, and it, at first it's going to seem, hopefully, uh, as long as all goes well, not particularly challenging because little things will come out and will blow them up fairly fast. But once these things start to stack up and your scanner, your threat dice start playing against you and sending in lots and lots of threats and all that kind of stuff, it's a pig. So there is our threat deck. Uh, I'm actually realizing I can probably get away with zooming in a fraction more. So I'm going to do that. Uh, and that, I think, will also help the glare, uh, because it will be closer in. Uh, am I right about that? If I put this here, here... Oh, no, that's not great. Uh, but the other three are all fine, so it's just that one level. If I do this, I'm just trying to find the best location to do this. Then two disappears. Mm, if I can do it so that that is... You can see it mostly there, and you can't see it at all there. So that's the worst spot right there. So let's put that there. You can see that. You can kind of see that. Okay, I think we're just going to have to deal with this. Uh, let's make sure that... Oops, excuse my massive arm in the foreground. Make sure that is turned down as much as is necessary. Okay, let's have a go. I'm just going to shrink myself a tiny bit, like so, just so that I can... Oops, 
just so that I can put this up here so we have our infirmary. All right, and we start with two threats on the board. So I'm just going to cut the deck once more in case I goofed anything while I was messing around there. And we're going to draw the top uh, two things. So we're going to have... Oh, this is entertaining. So our first two threats... Um, Sorry, just catching up with what Billy's been saying here. I like the idea that in all of space there are only six places where there is a calm break from scary enemies or problems. Right? It's kind of... I mean, I guess you are... You're kind of stuck there, and, and uh, I, I thought there'd be a much greater percentage of empty space in, you know, space. <laughs> yeah, so the, the deal with it um, uh, here, uh, Billy, the story behind this one, in case you uh, haven't seen the, the actual story side of things, is you are... You've just flown into a trap, and you're stuck in space, and the enemy is coming to you. So space probably is a bit more empty, but you're slightly screwed uh, until you can the rebel fleet can come and find you. So that's the uh, the delay in that. Put a cube in the glass glass spot to tile the cup. Oh, actually, that's a really. Why didn't I think of that sooner? I don't have any cubes on me. This is the one problem. I'm I stream nowhere near any of my game components uh, just because of the way. But if I put a pen there, and we do that. Oh, that's actually you know what? Even turning that down a little has helped. It's still not great. That guy you can mostly see. That guy you can't... Okay, so I'm going to just go a little higher. I'm going to move my uh, announcement down there. And we're going to go right up to the corner. And hopefully then... Yeah, this is the only place we can't see. So if I just tuck a pen in there, that will hopefully just allow that to be visible. Why did I not think of that? Thank you, Billy. I really appreciate the suggestion. Um, all right, so let's have a go. We have... Two internal, and I realise this is the one thing I didn't talk about, internal um, threats to begin with. These are not, these. you'll notice they have the square, they don't have any health. That's because they are not ships that are there, they are things that are going wrong on my ship. So my crew is distracted and we're in a time warp. Um, this is kind of, uh, this is a, uh, uh, so, right. I'm going to do this one first. If I roll a two, all threats recover one health. That's obviously bad. We don't want that to, have hap uh, uh, to happen, but right now there aren't any threats on the board, so I can focus on trying to deal with it. You deal with these by allocating these officers. So I need two science officers to resolve the time war. If I do that, it goes away. You do not have to resolve all internal threats to win the game. You only have to resolve external ones, but the internal ones will make that harder. Secondly, we have distracted. One of my crew has become distracted, so this card immediately hijacks one of my dice. That's what the uh, empty square here means, is I'm going to put that there and I'm going to put a die on it. If I send two medical officers to this card, I return... Um, I, can, I can make it go away. If I roll a three or a four, I get them back into the return section and the following round I will be able to keep using them. But I can get them back early if I happen to roll medical, which, you know, I don't have any threats to fight right now. So I'd be more interested in medical than in uh, um, tactical right now, for example. Anyway, let's go ahead. So the first thing I'm going to do is roll my dice and let's get going. All right. So I have tactical, I have two commanders and I have two engineering. This is colossally unhelpful. Um... I mean, I could use the quantum cannon. I get, oh, can you quantum cannon? I want to check that, actually. Can I quantum cannon? No, it's external threats, so I can't use the quantum cannon, which makes total sense. You can't use a cannon to defeat a time warp. Um, let's do the time warp again. Uh, oh, Jen, in fact, said exactly that. Uh, yes, that's totally reasonable. Go ahead and do the time warp. Um, that makes total sense to me. Uh, yes, so I can't copy. These guys are useless because I can't copy any crew dice. The tactical officer is fundamentally useless. I don't need to repair my hull, but I am going to send one engineer in here to perform a scan. So I get to look at the top two things that are coming my way. And we're going to get raiders that do minus one hull damage, ignoring my shields. Now that's not great. And I have the mercenary. Now the mercenary has no die number on it, so whatever I roll on the threat die is not going to affect him. But if nothing else goes off, he does two hull damage. So he creeps it. Basically everyone's hiding away, so he comes in and does their dirty work for them. That's the gist of that one. Um, so those are what are coming up. The raider will come first, the mercenary will come second, because I cannot change the order that those cards come out in. I can only look at them. And that's basically my turn done. 
Uh, there's nothing else I can really fundamentally do with any of these guys. Uh, I don't have a medic, so I can't re-roll. And there's no point copying anyone, because if I scan, I'm just going to look at the same two cards again. So that's me done. Um, I'm therefore going to just leave all of these as... Oh, no, hang on. Yes, I'm going to leave all of those as returned. Uh, I draw a new threat card. The new threat is going to be those raiders that we just saw. So that comes in at the... Uh, oops, let me just move that up a fraction so this works. There we go. That comes in with two health. And then I'm going to roll the threat die. So if I roll a one or a four, the raiders will attack me. That is a three. When I roll the three, I return the unit that was stuck on this card and then discard it. So this card is now gone. Uh, I'm going to put my discards here so you can just see the pile in the corner. That card has gone away. One and four does nothing. Two does... Well, I didn't roll a one or a four, rather, and I didn't roll a two, so neither of these cards does anything. I get all my crew back, including this guy, and we go again. That is the entire game. We do this until we either win and beat a Roboros, or we die horribly in the vacuum of space. All right. Okay, this is more useful. So, Tactical Officer is going to... Oh, well, actually, first things first, this guy goes up here. I don't have three, so this doesn't go off. The downside is that is locked there until I get three. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to have him back. I am going to send the Tactical Officer to launch some rockets and blow up this radar, so that gets destroyed. Um... I'm going to use the engineer. I'm going to like so we know this is a mercenary, but then I'm also going to have a quick peek cosmic existentialism. Uh, I cannot once I get once this guy comes out, I can't assign any science crew until I have assigned a science crew member to do this. Um, that's entertaining. Um, commanders, do I need to do anything else? Uh, I don't have a science officer, so I've got nothing worth copying. Uh, I'm going to reroll my available units and hope to get two science officers. And I get two science officers. That's lovely. The time warp goes away. Uh, Jen, you can stop dancing now. Um, and that's that. That's all taken care of. So I draw my next threat, which is going to be the mercenary, who's going to come in with three health. And if no threats are activated this round, he is going to do two hull damage. All right. Uh, just move that up there so you can see that, sorry. I just bought this game, uh, it's second hand, and I didn't uh, think about the fact that, because I don't really sleeve my cards, I didn't think about the fact that sleeve cards were going to trigger the, um, the ring lights glare. My apologies, I would have unsleeved the game had I thought that through, uh, but there we go. Anyway, there is nothing else to activate, which means the mercenary goes off and I lose two shields, because they will protect my hull from the two damage that is being done. Um, I don't even need to roll the threat die, I just know that happens. I take my available crew dice back, and here we go. Alright, uh, I'm going to send two tactical officers to launch rockets. That's going to blow up the mercenary. And this is why I say it looks like it's going to be easy at this stage, uh, because I'm just destroying everything that comes out. That will change. I'm going to re-roll, because what I really want is a science officer just to get my shields back up. Uh, rats. Well, he comes up there, and if I put him there, I'm re-rolling all available units, but nobody is available. So I don't get... I'm just checking. There's nothing... Um, re-roll, re-roll, re-roll. I don't think there's anything about the re-roll that says I don't put... Uh, I don't put that to uh, the scanner face. Um... Yeah, I think that, that still goes straight up. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, that was unfortunate. I've triggered the bad thing. That is what it is. Um, Jen says, I'm kind of getting some out of gas episode of Firefly vibes with this. Yep, yeah, that's... Yes, absolutely. Uh, that is another very good analogy to this game. Uh, anyway, there's nothing I can do there because I don't have anyone available, so I'm going to take these guys back, and I'm going to draw a threat card. I'm going to bring out Cosmic Existentialism, so the first science officer I roll has to go here, otherwise I can't use my science officers. Roll the threat die, no point, there's nothing out, uh, and I'm going to roll my next turn. Okay, well, that means I get a threat, because I have three threat results, so my next threat is going to be Friendly Fire. Immediately send all tactical officers to the infirmary, and then discard this card. Well, that stinks. Given that there is nothing whatsoever to shoot at, somehow one of my people shot my own officer. 
Um, it's probably the scientist and his cosmic existentialism. So I'm going to take care of that problem right now. Uh, I am going to... Oh, these guys go into the return section straight away, by the way. I'm going to use my medic to bring the tactical officer back. The cosmic existentialism has gone away, and that didn't really do an awful lot of anything, really. Um, uh, I'm going to draw a new threat. The new threat is going to be a fighter that will go off on a 2 or a 4, and it's going to go off. So I lose one hull, which equates to a shield, and that's that turn. All right. Hopefully this is all making sense to everybody now. I'm going to move along at a reasonable pace. Um, I'll stop for any of the weird cards that come up. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this all makes sense. Okay, so, first things first, I have a threat result. Uh, I do not have a tactical officer. I am going to place a scientist here to recharge my shields. And I'm going to do the medical officer to re-roll all available dice. Oops. Uh, just to clarify for anyone who has not watched my streams before, I only count the results of dice that land in my dice tray. Um, sure, I'm going to scan and see what's coming up. There's going to be a robot uprising that will send a unit to the infirmary on a 1, 2, or 3, unless my engineers go and take care of it. Uh, oh, sorry, those are out of camera. And there's going to be space pirates that do hull damage on a 3 or a 6. Um, okay. You will notice a lot of references, and I really enjoy this. There are a lot of references in this game to other science fiction universes. I'm going to hope to get... Um, what was I hoping for? I was re-rolling going for a thing. I've done that. Oh, I want a tactical officer if I can get one. Yep. Launch rockets, fighter gets blown out of the sky, and we're good. Uh, I'm going to draw my threat for the round. That is going to be the robot uprising. Um, so on a 1, 2, or 3, I have to send a unit to the infirmary. That is a 3. So he goes to the infirmary. And that's me done. Alright. Let's have a look. Okay, this is uh, partly good. Um, I'm going to use this to return him from the infirmary. I'm then going to use my commander to copy the medical officer, because that's what the commander does. And I'm going to use that copy to re-roll these dice, because I want an engineer. And I'm not going to get one. I'm going to use the commander again to copy that and re-roll one more time and I'm going to get another commander that's useless, um, never mind so the robot uprising stays in play, I was hoping to get rid of that because that kind of bites um, I guess what I could have done was send someone to the infirmary and then cop, yeah okay, I didn't do that the best way, I'm going to take it because early in the game there's not that much going on there are better things I could have done with that hmm sorry, well yes, better because you can send someone to the infirmary and then immediately heal them, which is a way of, of dealing with... Um, that's why I like the ability to send units to the infirmary in order to trigger something else to, uh, to, to a different side, phase of the side of the die. Uh, but I did not play that correctly, and I'm just going to accept it. So, new threat is going to be the space pirates. We knew they were coming up. Don't roll a three. That's a four. Okay, uh, nothing and nothing, which means nothing happens. That's perfect. And let's get everybody back. Okay, there is another threat, and there is another threat, which means, well, rats, uh, I'm going to return these guys, oops, that was at top, and I get an extra threat this round, which is going to be boost morale. On a six, I get to return one of these guys, who is on the, um, on the track already, and then discard this card, so that's actually a good thing. I'll take it. Alright, Engineer is going to go and stop the robot uprising, and then he's going to come to the infirmary to re-roll this in the hopes I get a tactical officer. That is another medic, that's useless. Um, sure, that doesn't matter. So this guy's gone away. My next threat is going to be a meteoride. Uh, okay, these suck. Um, that thing is going to do five hull damage. No questions asked. It's just going to happen. The challenge with a meteorite, uh, meteoroid, sorry, not meteorite, is to destroy it before it, um, uh, it, it, it went at a good time, essentially. Because when you roll a one, it removes one health from the meteoroid, which actually represents it getting closer to you. When it is destroyed, it will do five hull damage. But if you can destroy it at the right time, it's only going to be on the shields. If your shields are knackered and then it crashes into you, you have a problem. So timing with that one is very, very important. 
Um, so the robot uprising is gone. Right, we're rolling to see what happens. That is a three, which means minus two hull because the space pirates are attacking me. And we're done. Whee! Uh, I just want to check one thing, actually. Uh, meteoroid, when activated, the threat will be attacked to trigger the. Yes. I was just making sure I was right. The meteoroid will hit you regardless of what happens. Um, it specifically says you can attack it to trigger its effect early. So it will do five damage. Oh, well, that sucks. I've got two of those guys. Uh, three commanders. And... An engineer. And I don't really need an engineer. Um, okay, I'm going to send a commander to the infirmary. And I'm going to change this to a tactical. I'm going to launch rockets. And I'm going to blow up the space pirates. I'm then going to send another commander to the infirmary to change my engineer into a medical officer who is then going to return both of my commanders. So just in case you didn't follow what happened there, because I did it fairly fast, I have injured two of my people to enable two things I actually wanted to happen to happen. But because the second thing I wanted to do was I turned him into a medical officer, those commanders immediately come out of the infirmary and go into the uh, return section so I get them back straight away. It's just a nice way of being able to um, uh, to deal with that. All right, next threat is going to be a strike bomber. Uh, on a two or a four, I lose one hull and send a unit to the infirmary. So these, this guy isn't just going to be nasty, he's actually going to hurt my people. Uh, even if he's not getting through to the ship. That stinks. Roll him up. That is a four. He's going to do that. So I lose one hull and someone goes to the infirmary. Okay. That means I'm only rolling three dice at the beginning of this turn. And this is where you start getting overwhelmed. When you can't, especially if I don't roll a scanner. Uh, if I don't get one of these back. I'm only rolling three dice, which means I just don't get to do much this round. Um, and that's when everything starts piling up on you. Okay, so we have a commander, a medical officer, and a science officer. I'm going to use the science officer to recharge my shields. Uh, I'm going to use the medical officer to return this guy from the infirmary. And the commander... Hmm... Commander can't really do much. Is that the best sequence of events? I guess I don't have to recharge the shields, because I'm not going to take any damage yet. So instead... Before I return... Yeah, so this I am going to take back. I'm going to send the commander to the infirmary... It doesn't matter who. Commander to the infirmary to turn this into a tactical officer who is going to blow up the strike bomber. I'm then going to go to the infirmary and bring both of them back. That is a more functional turn and is going to be better in the long run. Invaders! So on a two or a four, I send a unit to the infirmary and I need two tactical officers to take that down. It may have occurred to somebody's mind right now what happens if... All of your crew is exhausted and you can't get them back. You lose. Your crew is fully inca incapacitated at that point. You just lose the game straight up. So you have to be able to roll one crew member at the beginning of every turn in order to keep playing. All right, threat says four. All right, so nothing here, nothing here, but somebody has to go to the infirmary, get everybody back, and let's keep going. Whee! Two science officers and a tactical. That's not terribly helpful. I'm actually going to send a, a tactical to the infirmary to make this another tactical and take care of the invaders because I think having them around is just generally bad. That puts me at a serious risk for the next round, but I think I just need to do it because having people on your ship causing that much trouble, bad thing. Threat card comes out. It's going to be space pirates that hurt my hull. I'm fine with that. Um, we roll a one. So nothing happens here, but the meteoroid has lost one health, i.e. it's that little bit closer to impacting my ship. I get these two guys back, that's it. The invaders have gone away. And roll them up. Ooh, that's bad. Okay, well, these guys all get returned. I get an extra threat, which is a shield platform. I have to destroy that shield platform before I destroy anything else, because it is protecting the external threats. Uh, that stinks. Then I'm going to use Infirmary to get these guys out, because that way I'm at least going to be able to roll all six of my dice at the beginning of the next round, which is fairly critical. My turn-based threat is a Nebula. On a one, two, three... Well, my shields are offline. Okay, this stinks. It just completely stole my shield cube. I have no shields. Um, on a one, two, three, four, or five, the Nebula loses one health. Uh, and if it is destroyed, either by me or... How you destroy a nebula with rockets, I don't know. 
but if it is destroyed by me or by it collapsing in on itself, I get my shield cube back. Uh, but now you can see why I'm in a bit of a pickle because I want, I mean, I need to trigger the nebula because I can't attack the nebula until the shield platform has been destroyed. Again, how a shield platform protects an entire nebula, I can't say I'm sure, but you know, there you go. That's them's the breaks. Um, yuck. Okay, rolling a dice. Or a die. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the nebula is still at full health. The space pirates do two hull damage, and the boost morale trigger has gone off and does nothing because there isn't a die here to return. So I just lose. This has happened to me every single game I have played. That card comes out, and I trigger it when there's nothing for it to take off that. And I don't think. I seem to remember I looked at this. There isn't uh Yes, if the card's effect is not usable, it, it it just goes away. So I just lost one of, like, three good cards in this deck. Um, I've lost my two hull. Nothing else goes off, so that is me done. At least I get to roll all six of my dice. Oops. All right. One goes up here, of course. Why wouldn't it? And we get this little selection. So I'm going to go to tactical, and I'm going to go to tactical, and I'm going to blow up this shield platform. And then I'm going to go to tactical, and I'm going to blow up a nebula. If anyone can tell me the science behind that, go for it. I get my shields back. Uh, shields go online. Uh, I think they go online. Is there a special thing? Yes, when, they, uh, when the shield is in play, you may not use or... Yes, it, uh, they go online, but they come back online at zero strength, which is why I was holding this guy, so that I can immediately recharge my shields. And... The medic is fundamentally useless, unfortunately. But I don't care because I've managed to do everything else. So that's good. All right, what do we got? We've got an interceptor. One, two, three, four, or five, it does one hull damage. Yuck. And threat says five, which means one hull damage, which is a shield now. Thank goodness. And we're done. Anybody has any questions? If I'm going too fast, let me know. Um... I'm going to just check that, actually. Yeah, no, everyone seems good right now. Okay, so here we go again. Two more threats, which means these are returned immediately, and we have a fighter. Minus one hull on a two or a four. That's not particularly dangerous. I'm okay with him coming out. And I have three engineers. Uh, well, I am going to use one of them to restore my hull. I'm actually going to use one of them to perform a scan. Let's see. Oh, I've got a don't panic coming up, and then I've got a rescue. So this is a different kind of card that's going to come out in two turns. Uh... I can, if I send a medical officer to go and rescue this soldier, I get the soldier, and I can hold onto that card and then discard it at a later point to re-roll all threat die results that are rolled that round. That's a really nice card to have in your back pocket for when you do, like I just did, and roll a whole bunch of them. Um, they really kind of stink. Uh, okay, so... Uh, and then I have one more engineer who really can't do anything. Uh, that's okay. I'm just going to throw him in there and repair a hull that doesn't need repairing. But that's okay. I don't mind. Uh, my threat for this round is going to be the don't panic, which is great. I knew that was coming. I'm okay with it. Nothing happens. Roll the threat dice. Three. On a three, I take one hull damage and two hull damage. So I do three damage to the shields. And that's it. And roll them up. Oops. Okay, one threat straight away. Uh, I'm going to... Right, here's interesting. So, I'm going to recharge the shields, because they desperately need it. Um, I'm going to send Tactical to go and launch rockets, and I'm going to blow up the Space Pirates, because they are bad. I'm going to use the Commander to copy Tactical and blow up... I'm going to do two damage to the Interceptor, because I don't like having him around. Um, I'm going to send this guy to the infirmary to turn this into tactical, and I'm going to use tactical to blow up the interceptor and just get rid of it, because I don't like having that out. And then we get our rescue mission. So, I want to try and roll a medical officer to be able to do that. Note that if I place a medical officer here, they're not doing this, which means they're not going to go to the infirmary or something like that, so there is a sacrifice involved in doing that, but I think it's a good one. Threat says two. Minus one hull for the fighter attacking me. I'm fine with that. Whee! 
Oh, lovely. Do I want to do this right now? No. You know what? Things aren't... I'm going to regret saying this. Things aren't bad enough right now for me to use my soldier to stop that being a thing. So I'm just going to let it happen. Uh, that is going to give me a scout. If I lose hull this round, I lose an additional hull. That stinks. Uh, I'm going to send... Oh, I don't have the soldier yet. Derp. I'm therefore going to send him to the infirmary to get the soldier because I really want to have the soldier. So this is now in my pool of things I can do. I'm going to put it there just to, res to uh, uh, note that. Um, this guy was safe and these guys were safe, so I'm just going to put them in the returned area for now. My threat this turn is a don't panic. Nothing happens. That's nice timing. I'm really glad I didn't have the soldier to use him. One, the meteoroid is coming down, uh, but nothing else happens. I didn't lose hull, so the scout does not trigger, and I get these four dice. I would like a medic. That's not a medic. All right, I'm going to use tactical. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm going to use tactical to blow up the meteoroid now while I don't have too much on the board, so I do five damage. I'm then going to send this guy to the infirmary to turn him into a medic, which is going to bring all of them back. And my trouble this round is a fighter. Two or four. So, same thing. Uh, that is going to be a five. Nothing happens. That's really good, actually, because I would have lost three hull uh, across these three cards if I'd rolled a two or a four. Uh, and I'm going to get everybody back. Jen says, maybe the nebula is a hiding place for some nefarious enemy of some sort, so you're destroying the enemy in the nebula rather than the nebula itself. That's the way. Yeah, that does make a degree of sense. Um, yeah, okay, I'll take that. Um, very season one of Star Trek. Okay, um, we got another one of these guys. Uh, this is good. I like this, actually. Well, recharge my shields with my scientist. Then I'm going to send two tactical officers out to launch rockets, and I'm going to blow up both of these fighters, because that scout is useless on his own. He does nothing unless I take damage. Now, something's going to come out that's going to do damage, but um, it at least gives me a means of uh, a little bit of a reprieve for a moment. And then this guy is going to do nothing, because I don't want to fire a quantum cannon. He's going to go for a spacewalk. Um, he's fine. Uh, panel explosion. I may not assign engineers until I assign a medic to the panel explosion. Whoops. Very Star Trek. Actually, it's Star Trek all seasons. Um, okay. Uh, there's no point rolling the dice, because nothing can do anything. Um, yeah. I'm going to take a minute. We're about halfway through the game right now, based on the deck of cards here, and just uh, quickly check in with everybody. Please let me know if I am going at an okay pace for you. Uh, I am, this is, as I said earlier, this is a very impromptu stream because I was planning on streaming tomorrow and I have, uh, I'm not going to be able to do so. Um, so I will, uh, I'm sort of moving into a bit of a lick just because I have limited time, but uh, I hope you're enjoying this. Um, I did also want to take a moment. So Billy, who is into the Meepleverse, who is in my chat right now, is another board game stream that I highly recommend you follow. Uh, he's been doing a lot of really great stuff. He did a full playthrough recently of the first scenario from Seventh Continent. Uh, which is something I'm planning on doing down the line, but not just yet. Um, but that, uh, I haven't watched it because I don't want to spoiler it, but I know the response to it has been really good, so I recommend you check that out. But look at his channel anyway. He's done an Imperial Assault playthrough. Um, he's done a bunch of really cool stuff. Uh, and uh, Billy, remind me when... I think I've still got my Nightbot set up. I haven't used it for ages, but if I do that... Yeah, there we go every Monday at 7pm, and I know he's been doing a, a few more streams than that recently, there's been a few bonus streams, but uh, check him out twitch.tv forward slash into the meepleverse um, if you don't uh, know board gaming and don't know meeples, meeple is m-e-e-p-l-e -E -E. uh, and yeah check him out, uh, there's a podcast as well um, I haven't been podcasting much Billy, uh, is the podcast still running? Um, or is it, uh, are you just streaming at the moment? I realized I don't know the answer to that question because I have very rarely been listening to podcasts recently. Um, please let me know. Uh, also recommend you check out Moyle's Meticulous Minis. Um, I don't remember what my Nightbot command is for those of you who are currently in Twitch. Um, 
I want to say it was maybe Moyles. It was not Moyles. Uh, anyway, Moyles Meticulous Minis. Uh, Scott Moyle is a miniature painter, uh, and he does a stunning job of painting. Uh, and he's a really, really entertaining host when he's doing so. He'll, he's the, I think it's four times a week. He paints for five hours, and he talks you through what he's doing, but he also engages with the people that are talking to him. He offers advice to people, uh, and his is an excellent channel to follow. So I do recommend that you follow that. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Moyles, that's M-O-Y-L-E-S, Meticulous Minis, M-I-N-I-S. Um, so go and check those guys out, because they are awesome, and they do really cool stuff. Uh, you'll also see in the bottom right-hand corner there my link tree, and also my social media profiles are going across the bottom of the screen. I would love it if you would come along and follow me, check out what I do. Uh, if you're watching me on Twitch right now, please do follow me on Twitch. Uh, but also, check out Once Upon a Die on YouTube. Uh, my The link is in my link tree, because my link is horrendously long right now. It's one of those alphanumeric uh, sort of 50 character links, um, because I do not yet have... You need 100 subscribers on YouTube to be able to personalize your own... Uh, uh, URL. So I'll get there eventually. Uh, but do check me out on YouTube. Um, look up D.A. Xavier with an X or Once Upon a Die and you should be able to find me. If you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, head over to twitch.tv forward slash Once Upon a Die and follow me over there. As well as please subscribe and follow me on YouTube. I really, really would appreciate it. I'm still comparatively new at the streaming thing. I feel like I've got the hang of it by now, but there's still a lot that I'm working on, uh, and I'm still sort of ascertaining, you know, what's what's good, what's working, what people are enjoying, and, and getting a lot of ideas for things I want to do. So please do follow me, and uh, let's build this community. All right, back to the game. Uh, I believe I just finished on my turn, so off we go. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we get another threat straight away, and we are going to get a Strike Bomber. So, same thing again, they do one hull damage and send a unit to the infirmary. And this is why I said there's a great benefit to getting those guys out first, because I can now send someone to Tactical and blow it up. Um, that's a nice feeling. Uh, I'm going to re-roll the available dice in case I can get... Oh no, I'm not. I'm going to just send him to uh, the panel explosion so I can assign engineers again. And this guy is basically useless. I can send him to tactic. Oh no, I'm turning him into a tactical officer and doing two damage to the scout. That's what I'm doing. Uh, threat for this round is going to be an orbital cannon. Minus two hull cannot be damaged unless it is the only threat. Because it's all the way at the back. Um, which makes total sense. Of course, it's an orbital cannon. It's in orbit around a planet. You don't go and attack the thing that is in orbit around a planet unless all the little things that are in between it that are shooting at you are dead. That makes total sense. So we'll be ignoring him for now. Is he going to hurt me? One? No, he's not. So panel explosion goes away. And on we go. All right, there we go. There's another one of these guys. Uh, tactical officer is going to blow up the scout. Commander is going to copy the tactical officer and blow up the orbital cannon. Uh, I don't have anything to recharge. I'm just going to re-roll these and hope I get an engineer. Oops. That's not so great. Um, no, I'm going to call that a day. Threat is rescue a telepath. If I can rescue this guy with a medic, I can discard it to look at the next five cards of the threat deck. So it's a super scam. Um... That's fabulous. I like that. Uh, there's nothing to roll. There are no threats that are going to hurt me. So on we go. Whee! All right. Uh, that's interesting. Um, engineer, let's scan. I'm going to send the medic to rescue the telepath. I'm going to get an interceptor and a bounty ship. The bounty ship will just nuke my shields immediately. They're great. And by great, I mean horrible. Um, but the intercept interceptor's a pain in the neck, too. And he's coming out this round. Not much I can really do. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to do, so I'm just going to leave these guys. I get the telepath. Uh, I'm going to put him here. You see those? Yes. Uh, let's bring out my threat for the round. It's the interceptor. We knew that. And then, unless I roll a six, which I don't, minus one shield. Okay. Okay. Perfect. That's what we like. All right, I'm going to use Tactical to blow up the Interceptor. Well, sorry, to damage the Interceptor, I'm then going to use Commander to blow up the Interceptor. Um, I'm going to recharge the shields, because I may as well. Uh, 
And I'm just going to call it with this guy. He's just going to sit there. Alright, here comes the bounty ship. Don't roll a 1 or a 2. That's a 2. My shields are destroyed and I lose a hull. I hate bounty ships so much. Okay. Good. Alright, well, first, bad things first. Let's get this guy out the way. That's raiders. They ignore my shields, but I don't have any right now. This is perfect. Tactical launches rockets. Damage is that. Commander launches rockets. Blows up the bounty ship, and I get to charge my shields back up again. That's a good result. Then, comms are offline. I cannot assign my commanders until I put an engineer onto the problem. And that's a three, which means nothing happens from the raiders. I am okay with all of this. Alright, let's get everyone back. Alright, tactical... Uh, whoop, first things first, let's get that out. Tactical's gonna blow up the raiders. Um, engineer is gonna fix the commander. Uh, and there's not really much else I can do. Hmm. Yeah, I think I just need to sit on that. Alright, threat for this round is going to be hijackers. They do two hull damage. Uh, now, so this is interesting. Um, these are hijackers. They do two damage on a four or five, but I can also just nuke them completely by assigning two commanders to that card. I don't actually need to rocket them. Um, now, obviously, I can rocket them, and that's fine, but it's not necessary. Uh, okay. Roll the die. That is a six. No damage done. This guy goes away, and on we go. Tactical, medical... Uh, okay, I'm going to sign an engineer to repair my hull. I'm going to assign medical to re-roll the dice. Ugh, yuck. Um, that really didn't go the way I planned it. Uh, I'm going to send him to the infirmary to launch rockets and do two damage to the hijackers. Uh, I was hoping to roll commanders so that I could just take them out immediately, but never mind. My threat is going to be solar winds. Uh, this is an external threat that has, uh, it doesn't have health. It is just going to sit there until I roll a two and then do five hull damage. Great. <laughs> yeah, these suck. Uh, let's roll them up. Five. Five does two hull damage because of the hijackers. Uh, that's okay. All right. Uh, he's in the infirmary. I don't get him back. Whee! Okay, there we go. Here comes another threat. Assault cruiser. Oh, whoa. I could have done without him. That's an assault cruiser. Uh, two hull damage, four strength, four and a five, which means fours and fives are really bad for me now. So I'm just going to tactical the hijackers out of existence, and I'm going to recharge the shield. Um, roll them up. Oh, no, don't roll them up. Uh, I get a strike bomber. Whee! Two. Two, the solar winds go off. I lose five shields. And then discard the solar winds. Uh, okay. Whoop. Alright, this guy comes back out again. Uh, this is not terribly useful. Uh, well, I'm going to recharge the shields. I'm going to send this guy to the infirmary to turn this guy into a medical to get them both back. And then engineer... Oh, I need to actually recharge my shields. Engineer's going to scan and have a look at what's coming. There's a Corsair and a boarding ship. Um, the boarding ship's interesting, so I can... It's, a, it's got four health, but I can simply assign one tactical officer to it to immediately kill it, but that tactical officer gets sent straight to the infirmary. Uh, okay, that's not great. Well, the Corsair's coming out. Five. Ugh. That's two hull damage from the assault cruiser and two hull damage from the Corsair. Yuck. Okay. Alright, let's see what we got. Alright, Tactical is going to launch rockets and blow up the Corsair. Commander is going to launch rockets and blow up the Strike Bomber. Uh, Commander is going to go and launch rockets and remove two from the assault cruiser. And Medic is going to re-roll the other Medic and get another Medic. Well, that doesn't help much, but at least I removed a lot of the problems that are facing me. 
Um, okay, threat this round is a boarding... Is Oh, we knew it's the boarding ship. Roll them up. Six. Nothing happens, thank goodness. Um, okay. Oh. Alright, what do we got? Alright, we got a threat thing. Uh, this makes total sense. Uh... Okay, I'm going to send a tactical officer to the boarding ship. I'm also going to send a tactical officer to launch rockets, rockets, excuse me, and blow up the assault cruiser. I'm going to have another look at what's coming. I've got another assault cruiser and a warbird. Ignores shields and does three damage. Yuck. Uh, and I'm going to send the commander to do nothing. So he goes to the infirmary, but the boarding ship's been wiped out. There's the assault cruiser. Four, two hull damage. So my shields are dead. Uh, okay. He's in the infirmary. Right, don't get him. Oh, yuck. Um, no, no, no. I'm still gonna... That's. Oh, it's the warbird. I probably should have done that. Um, no, it's okay. Shields are back to full. Commander can't do anything. All right, uh, don't panic. Nothing happens. Okay, that's all right. So the warbird would have come out anyway. Five assault cruiser does two damage, and that's me done. Okay, uh, there is one. I'm okay with one, except this is horrible. Um, okay. Recharging shields with the scientist. My engineer is going to the infirmary to turn this engineer into a tactical who is blowing up that warbird immediately. And the other engineer has nothing to do. But my shields are back up to full. And that's me done. Flagship. Does three hull damage on a four or five. So fours and fives are now terrible for me. So of course I roll one. Five damage to the shields. Um, I've been lucky I haven't had this kind of a combination out any sooner in this game. Um... Is there, oh, sorry, Jeremy said, is there any way to stop the solar win, winds, or is it just wait? It's just wait. That thing goes off. Uh, there is, unless I'm, I've totally missed something, uh, it cannot be attacked, and it only goes away when it goes off. Um, the one benefit to it, the only thing about it that's okay, is it does not block attacks on the orbital cannon, which we've already destroyed, but because you can't fight that when there's another external threat out, the solar winds do not count. You can still attack the orbital cannon if the solar winds are in play. And yes, Romulans. Uh, that was indeed this game's Romulan Warbird. I told you there were a ton of sci-fi references in this game. There are a lot of them. Okay. Oh, Jen also said, I hate to think what the health of a solar flare or, you know, a star would be. Solar wind. You mean the health effects? Yeah, I... Yeah. Yeah, that, I, I can't see that being a good thing in any way. Um, I guess I don't... Fortunately, my shields took it all, but... <laughs> um, so I just took a bunch of damage, right? Yes, so it's on to... Back to this. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, okay, that's a threat. Um, and that's... Wow. Okay, this is really risky, but I'm just going to have to send him to the med bay, to the infirmary, to turn him into a medic to get all of them back. Uh, cloaked threats. After the threat phase, roll the threat die ag again. Great. All right. Well, so basically I'm rolling the threat die... On a two, I roll the threat die again. I, that's actually okay, because a two doesn't do anything, except it means that a two is no longer as safe for me as it could have been. That's a six. That's three hull damage. So I take one there, one shield and two hull damage from the flagship. Fortunately, the assault cruiser does nothing. Uh, this is now getting slightly scary. Okay, I'm playing my soldier, and I get to re-roll all of the threat dice that I just rolled this round, because I am not taking that. Alright, that's an acceptable result. Um, holy smokes. Um, now you see, see, the game seems like it, it goes along treating you relatively well, and now I'm in this position, where if one of these things, well no, actually the assault cruiser can attack me and I'm okay. 
Um, I'm going to use tactical to launch rockets and do two damage to the flagship. Um, yeah. What do I do? I'm going to send this guy to the infirmary to turn one of the medics into tactical and destroy the flagship, and then I'm going to send this guy here to bring him back. I'm also going to use my telepath, because I realize I've kind of wasted it now. But here are the next cards. So I've got a Corsair coming up, a Destroyer, and <laughs> a Pandemic. Um... Oh wow, this is... I mean, the nice, the only nice thing about the Corsair coming out is it's tied to the 4 and the 5, which means there's less chance. It's not a widespread likelihood of things going bang, but let's see. Okay, so out comes the Corsair. If I roll a 4 or a 5, I lose the game right now. That's a 6. Oof, so two hull damage from the Corsair, but I'm still in it. Kinda. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's get these guys back. Roll them up. Alright, well, I can't do anything about it this round, so out comes the destroyer. I think I'm about to lose, in case you hadn't got that. So tactical can blow up... Um... What's it even good to blow up right now? Uh, I'm going to send this guy to the infirmary to recharge my shields. And tactical is going to blow up... Let's take out the corsair, because he's got the widest spread. It leaves me with a more open spread, but... I'm only going to take a maximum of three damage. If I left the Corsair in play, I could still take five damage, or four damage, if I roll a four or a five, because the Assault Cruiser and the Corsair would both attack me. I think that's the best move. Out comes the Pandemic. Right, because I'm just having a terrible time right now. Uh, roll up the dice. Whoops. That's a five. Five is minus two hull from the Assault Cruiser. That does that. Right, that's that taken care of, but the observant amongst you will have noticed one very key thing. Um, Jeremy says... Or, <laughs> Jen says, pandemic, how fitting. Jeremy, just to finish off the deck, eh? Uh, yes, just... Of course, that's the final card in the deck. I actually forgot there was a pandemic card in this game. Um... I'm not dead yet, says Jeremy. You are correct, except I think I'm about to be, because in the, the, the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed one thing. So, if I were playing the base game, all I would have to do would be destroy the assault cruiser and the destroyer, and I would win. But, I'm playing with Ouroboros. The threat deck is now empty, which means Ouroboros comes into play. This is where I lose. I'm just giving you a heads up of that right now, especially given the terrible situation I'm in. So, Hydra Cannons. Uh, I'm going to move these under here. I'm going to bring this guy. He's in the infirmary. I'm just going to bring these gu this guy down here so that we can actually see Uroboros properly. The Hydra Cannons do two hull damage on a one or a three. The Missile Array does three damage on a four, ignoring shields. Which means if I roll a four right now, I just lose like that, even though I have shields in play. Uh, there's a second battery of Hydra Cannons, because of course there is. The barrier protects Ouroboros, so I have to destroy it to uh, win the game, uh, to, to attack the core. But it will come back into play if I'm not careful. The core is the thing I have to actually defeat, and the attack matrix causes the threat dice to roll twice as long as it exists. Not so friendly now, is it? Alright, well, let's see what happens. Whee! Uh, that's the most useless die roll known to man. Alright, well, I'm going to send a medic in here. Well, no, I guess I can also send an engineer to repair the hull. Um, I'm going to send two engineers in here, so my hull is back to full strength, which means the missile array cannot destroy me in one hit. Roll these two for that. Uh, this guy comes out. Uh, if I have to draw a threat card, and I can't because there aren't any left, I take a damage. Does that happen? Um... Yeah, okay. I'm just checking rules of a rubber ass. Uh Yeah, okay, so... As far as I can tell, it's only if I have to draw a card because of these, I take a damage. Uh, I think 
There doesn't seem to be any... Now, this isn't a Roboros-specific rule, of course. Um... Yeah, skip... Oh, sorry, I missed that. Skip the steps. So if I... The regular threat draw phase, I now skip. But if I have to draw them because of this guy, then I... Um... Uh... Then I lose a damage. Well, I'm going to turn him into a medic and move that up there, and I'm probably going to blow up. So, roll the dice. That's a six. So, on a six, I send a unit to the infirmary. Actually, I'm just going to bring this guy down for the sake of it. He came out of the infirmary and went straight back in again. Um, actually, on a six, nothing else happens, which is kind of nice. Except because the attack matrix, I have to roll again. Of course it would be. Two. All right. Minus two hull for the Hydro Cannons. Uh, that's it, except the Cloak Threats went off down here. So I now have to roll again, which is nothing to do with the Attack Matrix. Four. Two hull... F so uh, I didn't actually say this. I should have said this at the beginning, and I'll, I'll put it in my notes when I put this on YouTube. You resolve threats top internal... Then top to bottom, left to right. So I'm going to go Assault Cruiser, Core, Hydro Cannon, Hydro Cannon, Missile Array, Destroyer, Barrier, Attack Matrix. All right, in that order. So for a four, I lose two hull for the Assault Cruiser. I then lose three hull ignoring shields for the Missile Array. And now I'm done. So that was one turn of a Roboros firing at me. And I'm only on four dice. This is bad. Oops. Okay, this is a little more what I was hoping for. Um, so, uh, recharging my shields to full, thank goodness. I'm going to repair my hull by two so that the missile array can't kill me. I'm then going to... Here's a question. The barrier protects a Roboros. Does that mean that the barrier has to be destroyed before everything? This is the one thing, the one sole issue I have with this game... Uh, is Ouroboros was a late... Uh, oh, uh, Jeremy says, what is the symbol in the bottom right corner of the barrier call missile array? Those indicate that those are the Ouroboros cards. One, you can take them out of the deck if you're not playing with him. Two, you can put them all to one side if you are playing with him the way that I am. And three, if you are playing so that they are buried in the deck, uh, like you shuffle them in at the beginning of the game, you trigger a Roboros the moment the sixth one of those cards is drawn. Um, so that's, they're, they're there to in identify a Roboros. Um, I just want to check one thing, forgive me for doing this on stream, um, but the one thing I'm uncertain of with a Roboros, it's, it's, it's a tricky thing. Is, does the barrier protect everything? I actually don't know the answer to that question right now. Um, uh, I just want to see if the... Oh, here we go. Um, okay. Uh, so the, to the, the designer has actually... Uh, The designers commented... So here's here's some information from the designers. So, uh, there's a second edition of this game, which actually... Uh, oh, sorry, of the cards, which came out with the Endless expansion, which I do have, but I've never actually opened. I only got this recently. Um, uh, the This is the first edition of the boss, which is actually incredibly difficult. Uh, the barrier protects everything, and the core... The idea is that you can just destroy the core, um, and... Uh, defeat Ouroboros. It's a shortcut, so if you have a ton of stuff out here, you can just go for the center. What is not clarified in the thread that I'm looking at by the designer, as far as I can see, um, is how Ouroboros behaves now. Uh, I should probably have opened the expansion sooner, I just wasn't planning on playing with it. Um, Recharge barrier, return to play if destroyed. Sorry. Da, 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 da. Okay, sorry, this is highly uh, highly unprofessional to be doing this on stream. Um, anyway, Tony Tony Go says, 
An older iteration of a Ouroboros, which is this, allows the whole thing to be destroyed if the core was destroyed. That was a shortcut for when there are a lot of other external threats. That same iteration also had the barrier protect all parts of the ship. The boss was too difficult, but you should try it. <laughs> so I'm playing with the too difficult version. Also with that version, you would shuffle them into the deck, etc, etc, etc. Um, he wanted something less finicky. Um, so the barrier, I believe, in the new version, therefore, from what other people have been saying, I think the barrier only protects the core. Which, the reason I was saying that is I'm going to use that to destroy... I'm going to use my tactical guy to destroy... Um, the attack matrix, uh, which is the thing that uh, rolls has you roll the threat die twice, because I just can't deal with that right now. Um, sorry, Jeremy said, if those symbols represent Ouroboros, my assumption would be that those without would not be included. Uh, sorry, Jeremy, I'm not 100% certain I understand that question. Um, if you're playing without Ouroboros, you would just play without the six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and the one I just destroyed. Um, I'm not sure if that's what you were getting at. Um, my apologies if I'm missing the point. Uh, Jen also mentioned you're floating in Reva territory approaching Miranda. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and then I'm going to use my medic here to get this guy out the infirmary, although I suspect he's going straight back. Um, I skip the threat step. Let's roll him up. This is going to be a two. Oh my good lord. Okay, so two hull lost for the hydro cannons. Um, and I roll again because of cloaked threats. Nothing to do with the attack matrix. I got rid of that. Uh, three. Uh, hydro cannons and a destroyer does three hull damage so I'm back down there again and that's that Yuck. Jeremy says by the protect oh I see yeah the barrier only protects a robber Um and I believe I am playing this correctly with the new rules although I haven't ever seen them but based on what people are saying on board game geek the barrier only protects the core uh, in this version that I'm playing with right now uh, and I'm changing this rule on the fly, but in this version, as the rules stand, the barrier protects all six parts of a Ouroboros. But given that it regenerates, that's a nightmare. And I think that's why Tony said this version is actually too hard. All right, what do we, oh, yuck. Okay, well, I take a damage for that. And then these guys are returned. I'm gonna recharge my shield. Uh, I'm going to use tactical to attack the missile array, and then I'm going to use the commander to destroy the missile array, which that's the thing that was ignoring shields. So now I'm actually roughly safe. Survey says five. I would recharge the barrier, except it doesn't... Well, actually, no, I go from here, first of all. So minus two hull damage for the assault cruiser, and that's it. Okay. Whoops. Let's go back to OBS. Sorry, I knocked that. All right. Let's have another go. Whee! Oh, God. Alright, two more. Uh, Alright, we're going to go repair the hull by two. We're going to send two guys into tactical to do four damage. Um, I'm going to take out this destroyer. And I'm going to... Let's do two damage to one of the hydro cannons. And the medic is fundamentally useless, unfortunately. Uh, all right, let's see what happens. We oops, that doesn't count. Oh, we five, five does two hull damage from the assault cruiser, and the barrier recharges. That's fine. Okay, I'm. Yeah, this is definitely way being able to. Have... So the big deal I had, when you're, when you're fighting with the barrier protecting the whole of Ouroboros, that means you cannot destroy the attack matrix, so you're always rolling two dice in the threat phase, which is lethal. Okay, that goes off, does a damage, no, it's, uh, and this stays in play. Uh, I'm going to recharge, oops, that was a thingy, I'm going to recharge my shields, and I'm going to send this guy down here to stop cloaked threats being an issue, so that goes away. Threat says... Oh, yuck. Okay. Two hull damage from the hydro cannons. Two hull damage from the hydro cannons. And the pandemic sends one of my units to the infirmary. Blasted pandemics. Alright. Well, there's another one of those. Uh, Alright, I'm going to destroy a Hydra Cannon right now so that ones do not do double damage to me anymore. 
Uh, I'm going to repair my hull to maximum. I know that seems superfluous, but it's a good idea, I think. And I'm going to do two more damage to Hydra Cannons. Threat says... Five. Two hull damage from the Assault Cruiser, and the barrier regenerates. Okay, that's fine. He's still in the infirmary. Alright. I might... I... Could I win this? Oh, there's another damage. That's actually hull damage now, because I didn't regenerate my shields. Well, I'm doing that right now. Um, and the commander is going to go here and get rid of my pandemic. If only it was that simple! Just set a science officer on the pandemic and it goes away. Oof. No such luck. Alright, threat says... Four. Two hull damage from the assault cruiser. And nothing else. Yeah, this means of play is, oh my goodness, so much easier than the main boss. I hope I'm playing this right. Uh, there's a threat. Um, Medic is going to recover this guy from the infirmary. Medic is going to re-roll both of these. Uh, that's going to repair the hull slightly, and this guy's useless. Threat says... Three. Two hull from the Hydra Cannons. I'm actually getting slightly excited. Whee! Uh, okay, there's another one of those. Uh, I'm going to regenerate my shield. Uh, I'm going to send this guy to the infirmary to turn this guy into tactical and blow up the hydro cannon. And this guy is going to blow up the barrier. So the barrier just goes down here because that will regenerate if I roll a five. One. Nothing happens. All right. All right, he goes there. Uh, that triggers that, so that's one damage. Uh, tactical is going to go here. How cocky am I feeling? No, tactical is going to fire on this guy. Uh, I'm going to recover him from the infirmary. Survey says five. Two hull damage. One, two. And the... Oh, five. The barrier regenerates. Okay. Oh, yuck. That's three dice out the way and a hull damage. At least I can recharge my shields. Uh, tactical is going to destroy the barrier again. Medic doesn't really serve any purpose. Threat says... One. Nothing happens. Oh my goodness. Okay. Right, here we go. Medic is going to go into the... In no, I'm going to do this with everybody out of the infirmary. He's going there. He is... Uh, my science officer is changed... Sorry, I've, that's off the screen. Science officer is changing uh, another uh, commander into tactical. Tactical does two damage to the assault cruiser. Commander does tactical two damage to the assault cruiser. Commander does tactical two damage to the core. A Roboros has been destroyed, and just because I feel like it... This guy is getting my science officer out of the infirmary, and this commander just fell out of the garbage chute. Um, yay! That's a win! That's a first, again. Yet another of my first time wins on the channel. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, but that was playing with my assumptive rules for the Ouroboros boss on the second edition. I don't know what they are for certain, um, but reading between the lines of Board Game Geek in a hurry without my copy of Endless near me, um, that's the best assumption I have of, of how a Roboros works now. Oh, and the barrier's still destroyed, because it can't come back! Um, that is Deep Space D6. It's a phenomenal little game. I absolutely love it. Um, I think it is so simple... It looks. It seems like a lot going on sometimes. This, to a certain extent, I got lucky. That one of the recent games I had, I had in three turns in a row, strength four like warships and flagships came out, and it's a real problem when you've got a lot of heavyweight stuff on here that you can't just like. I was able to send one or two tactical officers a turn here and just take out anything that showed up. If you can't do that, you have a real problem. Um, so yes, uh, it has its 
challenges. I got relatively lucky in this game, I think, in that I didn't face anything too nasty in that result. But this is a brilliant little worker placement. I really, really enjoy it. I cannot recommend it enough if you're looking for a little solo game. It is solo only. You can't play this with anybody else. Um, I mean, I guess what you could do is if you had two copies of the game, you could each control a ship and use the same die rolls and the same threat deck um, and see how, you know, you each... Res well, no, you couldn't even do that because unless you had duplicate threat cards... Uh, but it would be kind of interesting to see how that worked. But it is fundamentally a solitaire game. Um, and that's what it does. Uh, some of the other ships have some really interesting things. That's one thing I'll just talk about very quickly. Um, so, uh, the commander in the Halcyon actually just lets you do what the infirmary was doing for me, but without sending someone to the infirmary. You change a crude eye to any face. The lasers start out doing one damage only, but the more tactical officers you put in there, the more damage they do, and they add two per tactical. Um, the infirmary lets you actually return one of the threat dice from the top. Uh, there's a stasis beam on this. I can't remember what the stasis beam does. Uh, I think it freezes a... If I remember rightly, it freezes a... Oh, I can just look it up. I don't know why I'm humming and hawing. Uh, stasis beam... Right, you assign the scientist that goes here onto a threat card, and that threat card is stuck for the round. Um, and this just allows you to repair more hull at once, whereas I was only able to repair per engineer that I put in. Um, the AG-8 has drones. Um... That lets you reprogram drones. I have not used the drones. I don't know how they work. But one thing that did occur to me is look at the fact that this thing only has two shields. It has ten hull damage. But repairing hull is always more difficult. And in this game, you actually have to use the drones to repair your hull. So if you don't have hull drones, you're in trouble. The nice thing up here is, although you're going to get extra threat cards more often, you get fewer dice hanging. You can't have two dice hanging around here waiting to go off. Uh, if you've rolled two, it's gone off and you get the dice back. But this thing looks really intriguing. I don't know how the drones work, and I'm not going to try to explain them right now. And then the Mononoa wear. Uh, yeah, I actually don't know what that does either. Um, it looks like your attack is based on the crew that you actually have assigned to the ship somehow. Uh, this symbol, incidentally, is one symbol we didn't see on our ship. That means any crew member can go there. Um... This looks like a really interesting challenge. Now that I actually... I was, I, I just played the previous games I had on another copy. There's a copy at Snakes and Lattes Midtown. Um, I Now that I actually own this, I can start mucking around more with the different kinds of ships. And I will probably come back and do another game of this at some point with the Endless Expansion as well. And I might see if I can learn Mononoa Wear or AG8 and see which one of them is more weird uh, and play with that. But anyway, there we go. This, that is Deep Space D6. I highly recommend it. And I hope you guys... Uh, enjoyed this playthrough um this has been once upon a die as i said in the middle uh please do check out my work uh if you're on twitch right now head over to youtube once upon a die or da xavier will find my channel um and you'll see all of my twitch videos go up there once they're done there's a couple i need to add subtitles to but they can go there uh and if you're watching this on youtube well firstly follow and subscribe to me here but also head over to twitch uh, tv forward slash once upon a die and please follow me there as well i would love to build this community and just keep building it as i go um you can find me on uh social media you can see down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen my link tree that's the easiest way to get to all of my social media accounts uh my website and my various presences on the internet so check that out out and I would love to have you come and join me for future playthroughs. I hope to do another one by the end of this week. I'm thinking maybe over the weekend I'll be doing something, but I'll let you know. Uh, and thank you to everyone for joining me. Uh, Jeremy says it did get a bit hairy there for a moment, but well played. An airlock malfunction. Yes, the poor commander who fell out the airlock. Um, and Jen says, I love that each ship is designed very differently. I like that aesthetic. Yeah, it's great. And it also means every game is good. Like this game felt very, very different. Um, Largely things like having to repair the hull a little more slowly, like I, I could fire in all the tactical officers, but each one only fired at single targets. Uh, and the big one with the Halcyon is it has more hull, but it only has four shields, which means it's much easier for those shields to get taken down. Um, so I remember recharge shields was happening a lot more, even with fewer things out, threats out. Um, you're you're having to play differently in order to deal with the game, and it seems like they're designed like this was a very fair game, and dare I say it, slightly easier perhaps than my Halcyon game. Uh, the Ouroboros, the change of the Ouroboros rules obviously helped, but 
Um, yeah, it's very well thought out, uh, and I'm interested also in seeing what the, uh, the Endless expansion has. So next time I bring this onto the channel, I will definitely use that. In the meantime, thank you very much for joining me, everybody. I really, really appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, uh, feel free to leave them on my YouTube video. Reach out through my Twitch stream. Uh, my email address is onceuponadie at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from anybody. Uh, so do reach out. Do say hello. And I hope to see you on my streams in the future. I will announce the next one on social media as soon as I have it planned. And in the meantime, I wish you all a very, very good night. And keep rolling those dice until the game is done. Bye for now.